It's my pleasure to be speaking to you today uh, about speed and value sustainability uh, through wiring. We'll be describing uh, what we mean by wiring in more detail throughout the presentation. The objective essentially is to uh, capture benefits through rapid technology deployment, especially in the new normal, the new world that we're in today with the connected worker, the connected enterprise. And so it's important a, to create, to have the right speed, and B, to capture the value through and sustain that value uh, through wiring. I think uh, we'll all agree that uh, companies today are struggling to successfully capture meaningful value from their digital investments. Um, you know, technology in isolation can only uh, take us uh, so far. Uh, we need adoption, we need acceptance of new ways of working, and we need to intrinsically link that to value and to value drive the trees, so to ensure that everything that we do um, has uh, an output, has a value output for the, for the corporation, for the enterprise. Um, so wiring, as you'll see there, is a specific methodology that addresses capabilities, it addresses alignment, it addresses the KPIs and transparency w throughout the organization. Um, on the bottom left-hand side, we see the value pathway for many digital programs. We get a step change as the technology is implemented. Uh, it could be digital, it could be a, another technology as well. But then we also find that the usage drops and also the rate of implementation can slow down as we encounter resistance in the organization uh, to adopting that technology, that change, uh, and therefore we are slowed down in capturing value. So uh, what we are going to be talking about is how wiring, uh, over on the right-hand side, wiring into how business operates and how business uh, creates value and how people behave is a sustainable way to create a continuous improvement cycle and uh, cycles, in fact, and uh, to reach uh, full value uh, potential of the, of the organization. So it's a very people-centric approach, operation-centric approach, um, you know, to capture real value from digital investments and technology investments uh, as well, of course. So to fully unlock the value of digital technology, uh, companies need to uh, approach this uh, coherently and uh, holistically. Uh, and some of our recommendations uh, on the right-hand side include, for instance, being value-driven. That's absolutely critical. The, uh, the technology, whatever that technology is, needs to be intrinsically linked to the value drivers of the business. So we need to be value-driven and not um, just be looking for a short-term incremental productivity or a short-term cost reduction benefit. Secondly, we believe it's absolutely fundamentally important that we are led by operations. This is a key, a key premise in terms of how we approach um, these programs. So led by operations, uh, operations creates the connected enterprise, the knowledge worker, the connected worker, and it's there that we start to create value, capturing value, and getting real uh, KPI improvement. Um, then the third point is uh, that it's not only about technology, as we've said previously. It's about behaviors, capabilities, processes. Uh, these need to be incorporated into the solution that we are planning uh, to adopt. And then finally, uh, it's not just about pilots or proof of concepts. It's about creating a continuous loop, a, continua, a continuum, a roadmap between long-term vision and short-term gains that we are likely to make the, um, the, the project, the program that we are entering and embarking upon uh, to create long-term sustainable value with the emphasis on sustaining and growing. But of course, we need to understand uh, where companies are on their system and data maturity journey, as well as the internal appetite for change. Uh, some organization and some cultures are more closed and others are more open uh, to change. Uh, so for example, in a more closed environment with a lower system and data maturity, we need to look at basic and easy to buy solutions, always with a data management focus. Data is always the starting point, quality data, validated uh, data. 
Whereas at the other end of the spectrum, uh, companies that are uh, very advanced in system and data maturity and very open in terms of uh, accepting change and enabling change, there we have a holistic system with guaranteed outcomes. And those outcomes are created with partners. They are co-created. Uh, new solutions uh, come, come into play um, to the business challenges. So the holistic ecosystem is what we're aiming for. Um, in, a, in a company with uh, less advanced system and data maturity but open to change, then we normally recommend a modular journey on a common uh, platform. So on the right hand side, you'll see some of the key insights. And we've noticed that uh, you know, in the past year or so, there has been tremendous digital acceleration due to COVID, due to remote working. Uh, the acceleration in some cases, three to five years. Uh, organizations that uh, had started to use digital and were quite advanced in digital have really accelerated uh, digital implementation uh, over the past uh, year or so. Um, but again, stressing that the solution needs to focus on data connectivity and architecture. So data and people are the two ends of the spectrum that we need to focus on and avoid shadow data, avoid shadow applications and create a digital democracy as it's sometimes uh, referred to. And successful execution requires uh, four building blocks that we typically approach this with, uh, and, and the framework has these four building blocks that you see uh, displayed here. The, those building blocks start with maintaining alignment and ownership. Um, that's not as easy as it sounds uh, because of the siloed mentality that we have sometimes throughout an organization. So it's engaging people through different channels. It's creating clarity of the ambitions and creating the right governance model. Um, and it's also about building the organizational wiring that we will uh, uh, come to in just a moment in more detail. So it's defining the right set of KPIs, making performance transparent and uh, holding individuals to account. Uh, this is how we create and promote the high performance culture. But it's also about building a capability to deliver. Uh, and this also means transformational leadership capabilities, developing the digital native workforce, utilizing online uh, learning tools and other methods uh, to build that capability that we will need uh, to create a lasting uh, value from our digital solutions. And then uh, it's building a continuous digital pipeline. So it's not a, a one-off uh, event, it's continuous a uh, set of uh, events creating that uh, continuous improvement uh, cycle that we, that we wish to have. And so this uh, slide describes in a little bit more detail the way we uh, operate, the way we apply technology, uh, and it basically, as you can see, starts at the front line. It starts in the shop floor, it starts on the platform or the rig uh, or the uh, FPSO or the, or, the, or the refinery. So it's operating strategy and values. So what do people know what a good day looks like? Do the people working on the plant uh, really know what a good day looks like? And so we start our journey there looking at their output KPIs and their input KPIs to make sure that they're working on the things they can manage to create the value that we wish uh, to be created for, for the company. Then we move on to the operating disciplines. Uh, do we have clarity on what we need to do to deliver the operating strategy? And do we know how to do those things well? And then the second uh, um, part of the uh, pyramid is accountability. Is accountability assigned? And this is one area where we sometimes see uh, uh, need for uh, an intervention, need for quite a bit of work to ensure that individuals' roles, their measurement, their incentives are all aligned internally and with the operating strategy rather than aligned for their department or for their particular activity, uh, but not uh, in a continuum with the rest of the organization. Sustaining disciplines is the next level where we pro uh, track progress and uh, review that progress. Individuals need to be held to account we will be working in a far more transparent environment. And, and that's a good thing uh, because we can see the status of different activities, how information is flowing, and that information leading to better decision-making. 
And then finally, it's the continuous improvement. So as I said earlier, improvement is not a one-off event. It's a continuous process. We need to establish and upskill the continuous improvement team in the line, the emphasis being owned and driven uh, by the line. So this is uh, the, uh, the wiring pyramid, as we call it. And uh, of course, throughout the pyramid, uh, we need to have visible leadership leading by example and building a culture of value-focused agility. So our industry still has a tendency to operate in silence, as I said uh, earlier. And so one of the reasons we start at the operations level is we need to look for the interfaces that are critical along the core value processes. In this example, we've got eight key interfaces that we identified, and these are for a capital, capital project delivery process. And as we map those and clearly create the connectivity between those interfaces, between those teams and those groups of people. Uh, we then create a high-level design that ensures execution and delivery seamlessly. We're eliminating barriers. Uh, we're eliminating silos to enable faster and better decisions uh, that we can then digitally enable uh, in order to create greater value. A couple of case examples uh, to start to wrap up. So case example one, leveraging big data and predictive analytics. Predictive analytics is nothing essentially new, and we've got AI and ML now uh, as well. Uh, but it's not just about the tool. It's moving beyond the tools themselves that we had to create the right team KPIs, ensure they were aligned, create the right transparency, and ensure that continuous improvement is embedded. That is very, very key. So really it's uh, steps eight and nine where we put in place uh, continuous improvement of model predictions in this, uh, in this case, and we design a program, a holistic program, that moves beyond point solutions to reduce failure probability. So fit for purpose digital solutions make the performance of an organization highly transparent, as we said, and creates a high performance culture. And uh, there is a term here being used, single source of truth, and I'm sure that will be familiar to many of you. This is a key objective uh, because sometimes we encounter shadow data, shadow versions of the truth. And so when we're trying to create an integrated and uh, an unified view of uh, the status of an organization, uh, how it's performing and how it could perform, um, we need a single source of truth. So a performance management system that ensures a single source of truth is absolutely critical. And you see here how we would go about uh, doing that. In the second case example, this is an example where uh, data and domain expertise come together. This is data and linking data with people that have the right expertise uh, in order to connect the enterprise to make the right decisions. So the objectives are, yes, a greater understanding of what's happening uh, around the various teams and departments, breaking down silos, uh, clarity on the status and uh, and connectivity around data and, uh, and status at any given time. Uh, but it's also an appreciation of the part each team plays in the business cycle in making their decisions and their accountability and responsibility. This, without this, uh, we cannot uh, embark upon a real sustainable value creation uh, journey. And so having clear meeting inputs, agendas and outputs, all of which are visible, will allow aligned decision making. And this is uh, very, very true in today's world of remote, remote operations with connected workers. We need to have clarity at all times, visibility at all times, in terms of the KPIs, the health of the business, so that collectively we can make the right decisions and we're flagging the right um, issues. So here we apply a, a three-step process for uh, this particular uh, a scenario where we looked at the existing performance management meetings and reporting. We looked at the underlying information systems and data, sort of how data and information is circulating within the organization, and then provide recommendations and implement those re recommendations to create improvement opportunities and capture the value. So it's really uh, back up to the top there. It's really 
Do the right people make the right decisions at the right times? Do they have the right information? And then what are the underlying systems and data, not just the data itself, but the quality, the validity of the data, uh, supplying uh, this data so that people can make the right decisions and enter into the continuous improvement cycles that we wish them to. In the last case example, uh, we're referring here to an operations transformation at a downstream company. And uh, we had a 20% increase in output um, through a, a PMO, Program Management Office, that was implemented. And what we did here was, uh, first of all, establish clear racy matrices uh, and clarity around the functions and the interlock between those functions and the alignment between those groups uh, and those interfaces. Um, then we also looked at prioritization. That's usually a very big issue, prioritizing improvement ideas. And how do we prioritize? Back to the value, back to value driver trees and the way that we make our decision prioritized based upon the value that we can create. And, um, and so ultimately what we did here is managing and tracking all of this, creating the process. Uh, we were able to de-bottleneck and, uh, and that led to uh, a significant increase in, uh, in the output. So essentially what we've done here, we've focused on how wiring an organization, creating a value-focused culture with the right set of behaviors can accelerate benefits capture. And part of that is definitely digital, part of that is definitely technology, but uh, we, in our opinion, the most important part is the human beings, is the people using that digital, uh, those digital tools and that technology that ultimately will create value for the enterprise. Thank you very much.